Hello and welcome to episode eight of the Flatback Four podcast with me, your host, Andy Maguire. Joining us today is Scott Eaglin in Leeds and we have the return of BB. All right, how are you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Very busy, very right, busy. Scott? Very well, Scott? very well. Again, very busy, very good man, well. Good man. Well, we haven't seen uh, BB for a while because he's been working a lot on the Bundesliga and this is the Flatback Four's Bundesliga review show. So we're going to be doing this every week. We will be doing it with the Premier League as well once that gets up and running, but of course, at the minute, it's just a Bundesliga, uh, Bundesliga, sorry. So, BB's been working very hard for the last couple of weeks getting that up, and unfortunately, BB's still unwell, but he will be joining us on the next uh, podcast, that I can tell you. Um, so, first of all, BB, how mad has it been getting the, uh, you know, the Bundesliga coming back and all the, re- the you know, the, the fixtures and the odds that you've been having to do? Because we told the, the people before that you work in this industry and the betting, What's it been like since the announcement of the Bundesliga? A uh, sigh of relief, I think. I think that's for every bookmakers, especially ones that are publicly listed, the likes of William Hill and Flutter and, and you know companies such as that. It's a massive, massive comeback from. And you've got other other countries coming back as well, Poland, Austria. You know, the list keeps going, and hopefully this is just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So for you guys, for like the money wise in the game and stuff, obviously there's no fans at the minute, but revenue, um, even online betting, obviously people forget that people go, well, there's online betting, but there's been nothing to bet on. So has there yeah. been a bit of a surge? Have you seen a surge in the betting for, for the, these games? Maybe that you wouldn't have seen in the percentage margin? Uh, massively. Turnover's probably threefold at the minute, just with the Bundesliga. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's quite, yeah. And obviously you live in, in Holland. What's the reaction been to the German league starting after the, the announcement of obviously the fact that, um, you know, the Dutch league, the Eredivisie wasn't going to go ahead? What have the Dutch fans reacted to, to the Germans playing? Well, I think it was, we spoke about it, didn't we? Maybe they did it a little bit too early. Mm. Same as France, you know, uh, these, these clubs and countries are coming back now and doing it without spectators and it seems to be working fine. We've already discussed, you know, they have the best medical professionals and stuff in football. So, yeah, you can say they're pretty annoyed. I mean, uh, we're going to go on to that, actually, about the crowds and stuff. Scott, we we watched it and obviously we were sceptical about the, the, the no crowd situation. It's weird, isn't it? It's, it's a weird situation. It's not right, is it? It just don't feel right. You know, the no crowd. Yeah. You know, you can hear every, everybody on the pitch. Um, it's a good job it's in German, isn't it? Or off the beer. Is that not intriguing though as well mm-hmm. at the same time? I know like I know obviously they're speaking German and, and, and whatnot, we're hearing things and stuff, but there's actually a little bit of a flip side. When I was watching the um what game was I watching the other day? They're, they're all rolling into one because there's no fans. But <laughs> uh the the actual um uh the actual games have been extremely weird because I've actually been watching the football and there's been some great games, like we're gonna move on to the games in a minute, but actually the the, the the spectacle is so strange because you are watching for them little things that you probably wouldn't be watching for in a game. Yeah, I, th- I think it's strange after game one, um, but you kind of get used to it after the first game. It's uh, you know it seems strange for after game one. We watched uh, the South Korean game, didn't we, a couple of weeks back, yeah. where, they, where they played uh, crowd, crowd noises over the uh, over the game, which I thought was actually quite good. I weren't looking forward to that, but I actually find it. You quite remember good. when I said to you? Remember when I said I wonder if they'll put noise over and you yeah. know the what? And then they did, and you were like, I don't know. And, and actually, said, it wasn't mean? too bad. It give a little bit of atmosphere, I suppose. But, it's, um, it's better than absolutely nothing, though, isn't it? You know, when you when a goal goes in, all you can hear is two or three people on the bench going wild. It's, yeah, it's not real football, is it? And that's you know, a, that's when, a yeah. Saturday, Saturday league game, as that's got. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, zero crowd. <laughs> it's, uh, it's no different from listening to us play five a side, is it? You know, it's just it's the same sort of shouting the yeah. same sort of movements um but yeah it, it just don't feel right but we're gonna have to get used to this because this is gonna happen oh, in a minute we're gonna have to get used to it yeah. um it's gonna I be just... it's gonna be interesting though isn't it you know when it, when it does come over to england um the lack of crowds like we say with the swearing and stuff are they gonna mute out a lot of this stuff because they mute out the crowds don't they particularly like when they like the leads play you know when the crowds are singing some not so nice songs. Maybe they might. Maybe they might actually use what they did in South Korea. You know, maybe just to drown out some of the swearing because there is a lot of kids that watch it. And you know, I understand it. And when there's forty thousand in the stadium, the kids obviously don't hear anything. I mean, maybe people around you, but maybe they might do out noise. I, I'm not sure. What, what do you reckon, baby? Do you think they should play noise or? 
I don't. I think they should play noise. Maybe keep the yeah. plastic dolls out of the crowd, though. You know, not for oh, the weird. Career, weird. Did you see Oh, that? they were weird, weren't they? Oh, <laughs> That's my That's brilliant. Word. I tell you what, boys, there were one there, and I swear to God, it looked like Katie Price. She was sat there with a massive <laughs> mouth. I couldn't believe it because I think somebody got in trouble that they had, um, they had I think they used sex dolls or something. That was, yeah, China. Sex dolls. was it in China? Well, oh, was it in China? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, Korea, swear, Korea did the sex dolls once. Korea won it. Korea, yeah, yeah they Korea. get a How big, get big fine for it as well. I tell you what, no. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like no, an episode no. of Only Fools, man. Yeah, <laughs> or like you order something off Wish and that comes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? um, all right, okay. So, right, right, let's get into, uh, let's get onto the games and stuff like that because actually, there were some good games. There were some high-scoring games. There were there were a lot of dramas. Such a shame that there weren't a crowd there. Um, I, I just thought there were some. I thought there were some top games. Bayern Munich for one. BB, give us a little bit of info on Bayern. What the odds were for that, and if it all came uh, through for you. I, I mean, Lewandowski of course got his goal. Uh, Bayern were good. Alfonso Davis, he's some player, him isn't he? Oh, he's brilliant. I saw him first time in Champions League he, um, this season. So obviously, you don't really watch Bundesliga unless, well, now, now you're going to watch mm. it. But yeah, I saw him in Champions League, and he's absolutely incredible. Well, he's a he's Canadian, isn't he? He's frightening, so, so. and as well, his pace is frightening. But also, he seems to have a clever brain as well because he he um, he scored, didn't he? And he anticipated the ball like a striker, and he smashed it in with his right foot, and it was actually a really, really tidy finish. He looks really, the fact that nobody's speaking about him as well, I think, is, mm. is more. You know, we talk about Andy Robertson being best left back in the world, and this guy, you know, definitely give him a run for his money at this point. Yeah, he, he's but got I, that I, Albert, a, uh, he's got that Albert feel, but yeah, he's got maybe a bit more tools in his lock. He's, he's got that bit of Gareth Bale about him as well. Like, yeah, yeah, it, may, maybe he might not end up, maybe he might not end up at left back, you know. Mm. I'd just like to clarify that Andy Robertson is the best left back in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the Liverpool fan, yeah, we still have in stick, <laughs> y'all. We still have in stick, baby, that you to uh, have Joe Gomez as an overrated player. Uh, 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 we had, we had, obviously, we interviewed Ian Dowie, and he, he was on about the uh, the Bundesliga, just even being up and running, and the games, you know, being finished, no matter what. And like Scott said, the fact, we're gonna have to get used to this. The Premier League is obviously gonna go um, into this um, as well. Bayern seemed to be. Playing great, Muller. What were the odds again for, for Bayern? I'm guessing obviously they were they were favourites. Yeah, they were one point one five. They're, they're always going to be something like that when they play yeah. at home. Uh, uh, only against Dortmund, maybe they won't be. Yeah, which we're, we're obviously going to touch on that later. Speaking about Dortmund, though, this week, uh, tell us about Sancho. Tell us what's happening with Sancho over there at the minute. I'm uh, not a clue. I mean, this were in the first round of games post Corona. And he was obviously put on the bench. I thought maybe slightly injured. I've read nothing about an injury, nothing at all. Again, this week on the bench, he's played something like 30, 38 minutes over these mm -hmm. two games. Now, they've got Bayern in this midweek. Mm -hmm. But I don't know with his numbers, why, why is he on the... They've gone They'll and won back, both games. They'll be even back. Yeah, maybe, but everybody else is the same, you know. Haaland... You know, they're all around the same age. It's not. Mm. But I, I, I mean, just with Sancho, know didn't he come on? Didn't he? And he, he changed the game. He, he, he set up. Then he? he did a great driving run. He, he's doing what Sancho seems to do. Um, he's such a good player. Yeah. I think England. Uh, I think we we blessed there with the player. I mean, I think with the likes of Phil Foden and and, and Sancho. I mean, we we've got some we've got some good talent there. I mean, I think Foden probably now post Corona. And after David Silva leaves, I think we're going to see the rise of him in a couple of years. I mean, I'm not a big fan of like Declan Rice and stuff, but, but you know, he's a good player. But he's, you know, we've got this bleed, you know, bleeding youth, and you know, we, we're getting them through. You know, I'm not swearing them, we're but bleeding <laughs> the youth through, you know. But Jaden Jay, Sancho is definitely probably one of them players at the minute where there's talks about that he's he's probably going to go. Um, maybe does that because the Germans they don't mess about. Do you think there's anything why he's maybe benching him? And bringing him on because he's obviously assisting, so he's well, doing his, his job. His numbers, yeah, his numbers are incredible this year. I, I can't, I can't see that though. I don't, I don't know why they'd be benching him. I always kind of see Dortmund as sort of that. How Liverpool were a few years ago, you know, a stepping club, mm. a bit of a stepping club to to go on a Bayern or elsewhere, you know, bigger clubs. Well, um, we said that. We said that, mate. With um, 
in that we were on about uh, Haaland and we said, was it the right choice that he decided to go to mm. Dortmund because Man United were still in transition and maybe you might see Borussia Dortmund as a stepping stone to go and score loads of goals. He's 21 or whatever, like, mm. or 19. Well, how old is Haaland? He's young, he's 19, 20. But, but, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, Sancho's obviously gone there and proven himself. But what were the odds for Dortmund in this game? Dortmund were 1.9, so it's just odds on. Okay, all right, okay. Um, oh, we're going to come back to the, the Dortmund uh, by Munich game uh, later on for, for your prediction on that, because I know, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to talk about that. By Leverkusen, what was, I mean, they're fighting for Champions League, aren't they, at the minute? Yeah. So, what was the odds going into that game? So, it was tight 2.5 Munchen Gladbach, 2.6 Leverkusen. And this was probably the game of the week. Mm. Uh, you know, going into it and then probably even, you know, the game itself with the game of the week. The ball fighting for Champions League football. He's some player that has um, so, isn't he? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I was speaking to you guys, well, I think I texted you during the game, didn't I? Uh, somebody's definitely going to snap him up. I, I'm not sure, you know, fans now, British fans are going to be watching these games, see the player that he is and, you know, they're going to be wanting him at their club. There's so many good talents at the minute. Werner. Uh, oh, Andrews, I'm going to get on to you know, him. Yeah, I, it, just, know, what a yeah, player. I mean. What a player. Um, I mean, obviously, Gladbach, uh, Gladbach they, were, they were flying. I mean, they still are flying. They're having a great season. Are they, in, in German terms, are they exceeding expectations? Are they doing maybe what like Leicester are doing kind of at the minute? I know they're a little bit further down in the league, but are they, you know, because they, they were flying, weren't they? They were, they were doing so well. Especially around yeah. Christmas time, weren't they? Weren't they, they were top for, weren't they top for quite a while as well? Or they were sniffing around, weren't they? They've just dropped they've, off a little bit. Yeah, they're doing well. You know, outside of Bayern and Dortmund, it's anyone's game. So, you know, the, the next six places, I'd say, six, seven places. Mm. Um, they're, they're another club, aren't they? By yeah. uh, Munchen Gladbach, who had a lot of cardboard cutouts in the stadium. It just looks mm. weird. Really <laughs> weird. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be like robots next. We'll have them like moving. Like, yeah, a lot of crouches in. I'm not sure what club it is, but you can pay to have your cardboard cut out in the stand. Yeah, I think may have been I, that, might, that might have been Munchen Gladbach, actually. It, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, fair Would you pay it? That I think it seems well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, um, but yeah, okay. So, I mean, the, the, the Bayer Leverkusen Gladbach. So, what what is, uh, do you know off the top of your head there, BB, what the points are between them two at the minute and, and, and fighting in fourth have you got it in front of you because uh, I'm uh, guessing with them it's going to be if you were a betting man obviously uh, for that game uh, it's one of them accumulators it could be a make or break which one the Gladbach and Leverkusen yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, well I, that probably wasn't the breaker this week it's, it, we're yeah. a bit of a split but um, yeah I think the one point in front now Right, okay. right. They've, so they've it, leaked from still tight. Yeah, they're just it's still tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I've I've got to say, boys, I think one of the goals of the the, the weekend this this week was was Paderborn's goal. It was a mistake, and it was like an R one circle finish <laughs> on PlayStation. <laughs> oh my God, what a finish by by that lad! I, honestly, it was unbelievable because he pounced on it. You thought he could have taken it further, and he just opened his body and just bent the most beautiful goal I mean it was a shocking it was a shocking defensive mistake but the, the fact that he took it so cool that must have been a goal where he thought I wish there were 40,000 in this ground. oh yeah <laughs> yeah I, you know do, do you not think that there's been some shocking defending I thought over the last few weeks oh awful awful, yeah. awful absolutely awful. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what you lot thought but I I would have thought the, the intensity of the game might have slipped a little bit but actually they've been right up there mm. haven't they and there's been loads of goals mm. But like you said, the defending has been absolutely awful. All right, I'm going to ask you though, Scott, do you think it's because pressure's off and there's no fans there? Every mistake that they do, they're not on to them as much? Yeah, I think so. I think when there's fans on, on your back, you know, the concentration levels are up, aren't they? I think when there's no mm. fans there, I think concentration slips a little bit. Um, All right, OK. I think we'll touch on Schalke in a bit, but I watched a bit of the Schalke game and I saw John Joe Kenny slip up big time oh, yeah. for their second goal. Mm. And I just thought, you won't, you won't be making that mistake a in front of a crowd and be at heaven. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't think they've been making those sorts of mistakes. But defending as a whole has been has been absolutely terrible. 
Uh, we've got to figure out we're only, only two, go, two games in, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. But I, exactly. I do agree. I do agree. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would definitely going to take them two, maybe three match weeks to sort of get game ready. I think after this midweek, going into next weekend, you're going to see a lot better football. Me personally, that's what I think. Mm. I think they're going to be starting to get match fit, match confidence, and we'll see better football. I, I'm not even sure football. what they did. I don't know what they did in Germany with the training. Whether they had this not no contacts when they when they were coming back because it seems like they were kind of back and then all of a sudden they got the green light to go and then they were playing. So mm. maybe like you just said there, BB, it's probably just getting back into the swing and maybe two or three games and then bang. Hopefully we should see maybe more but, like one nils, two ones. Do we, maybe do we see bad defending at the beginning of seasons? Yeah, you see, you see mistakes, and also you have a pre-season before that as well, don't you? Yeah, that's true. And they've had a lot longer than a pre-season off. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. I guess so. And the, the I mean, training's not been as intense. Like, and, and I guess actually thinking about it, you know, when you when you think about defensive training, you defend in a group, don't you? You don't defend as individuals. True. true. You know, you defend yeah, in, you either defend in waves or you defend as a four. Um, and I guess there's no way of doing that short term. I, don't, I think they came back in. Singular and then in, and then in groups, didn't they? In Germany, similar to what they're doing over here. Yeah. But I guess you know if you're only doing two or three weeks in a group of four, you're not really going to get that defensive training that that might used to be that you would in pre-season. Yeah. yeah true. True. Um, the Werder Bremen game, tight. What did you have for uh, the odds for that? Well, Bremen won one nil, didn't they? They were outsiders three and a half. So three point five. We Bremen then, like how you know, like with the odds and stuff, the way that you see the betting over there, how is it different compared to to the English betting BB? With you know, like you know, like Premier League, sometimes you'll see you know Norwich against you know Liverpool and they'll win, and you think, oh god, like is it similar over in in in, in Holland the way that the betting stuff, like the difference? Do people go, oh well, they they haven't got a chance of winning, and then there's a result, and you go, what? That's bizarre. Or is it is it more consistent over there? No, you call them Akabust uh Akabusters. So okay. you know, if, if not Norwich beat Liv <laughs> not Akabusters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I try not out. to say it. I try not to say it. I, <laughs> I didn't want any advertisement, you know, like <laughs> So people put these these teams in like buying and stuff that that go off at one to seven, one to six, one to five. Uh, just to sort of prop up their hackers because they think they're a sure thing. I, yeah. I'm guessing that same country. Why'd you get that here? You get it in England. And if one of them teams go, it's big buck is paid here. Yeah. Well, good. Um, you know, good for the industry. Bremen are a funny team, aren't they? Because they um, they've had like they've had some decent players over the years. Um, but they um, sometimes when I watch them, they flatter to deceive and they're a, they're a bit of a, you know, they might win one, then they lose three, then they win two. I, for me, they're a bit bit of a strange club. Um, although I am quite good with them on FIFA. I don't know. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, if that's you know, anything to go by, then they've got a better future, haven't they? Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, uh, There's always Hoffenheim for me. Yeah, I, I tell you what though, the and for me, this is, I'm going performance are we? How good were Leipzig? I mean, oh. they are a team, aren't they? Some of the football was unbelievable. I Some of the defending. Yeah, I know the defending was terrible. But when they're like three up in the first sort of half an hour, again, team of Werner, unbelievable. But some of the football what a was player. absolutely unbelievable. Touch, touch, counter-attack. It was like Arsenal 2003 4. It was just unbelievable. Uh, mate, I have, I'm not going to lie to you, Scott. I've got Leipzig, performance of the week, like Arsenal in the prime. I've literally wrote it that down. That is absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. unbelievable. Because they are literally walking. Did you see the goal where they walked it in and Vernon yeah, just tapped unbelievable it? Unbelievable goal. It was, and you know what? You saw the when you saw the play going, you you absolutely knew what you were going to see, didn't you? You yeah. knew, and it felt like Perez Lundberg to touch Henri, and that that was literally the feel I got. Timo Vernon, has he got twenty nine goals this year? Yeah, something like that. Did I read that right? I think he's just that behind, is just behind Lewandowski. Unbelievable. But it's thing, 20, 24 in Bundesliga. The thing is, twenty four in Bundesliga. Yeah. yeah. The thing is about goals like that, about goals like that, and about goals that Arsenal used to score. You know, if you're a coach of the opposition, I think sometimes you just need to sit back and just admire the counter attacking. Yeah. You know, there's not a, mm. there's not a great deal you can do about stuff like that. Yeah, and I think, but also the defending as well, man. The def the, the hunting packs. Did you see when the, when they lose the yeah. ball, Leipzig? Yeah, yeah. They have just I, got that well-oiled machine. I think they? it was their third goal, wasn't it? You know, where they, they were just 
I think the ball was sort of in and around the centre circle. And there were two or three. They won players. the ball, didn't they? Yeah, there were two or three players around them, and they just counter attack straight uh, for the goal. The, it was just unbelievable they've been football. struggling. They've been struggling last few games, Leipzig, and I watched them last week, and it wasn't great last week. Obviously, the mm. first game back, um, but yeah, completely different team this week. Uh, BB, you know. is it is it Leipzig? BB, is it is it if they click, they are brilliant. But if they have an off day, they they kind of maybe don't have a plan B. Is that maybe the way that people see Leipzig a little bit? Yeah, you could kind of go that way. Last week I watched them, and yeah, they were they were pretty poor, and pretty lucky to get a point last week. And as I said, they've drawn the last three games before this. Um, but I, yeah, I agree with you there. If they click, then bang, they can mm. be challenging Dortmund and. Um, Bayern, but on their off days, you know, maybe that's where they're just struggling to get that extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra and as well, push. you always feel as well like maybe we like to, even though they, they're getting to be a good team, people are going to start pinching the players. I mean, how good would Werner be in like a Liverpool team or, um, that, you know, it's, it's pretty it's frightening. A good, it's a good point to make that though, because Dortmund have had that done to them. They've had players mm. nicked from them over the years and they still, they're still able to maintain that high level class football whereas yeah. if Leipzig lose a few players this season are they going to you know are yeah. they going to be the yeah. same force next year they're going to be able to recruit players it's just one of them it is interesting especially as well now because I don't think we all I don't think any of us really know what's going to happen with the transfer market do we so it's because uh, we're obviously a, a transfer market will open maybe when the season ends but actually nobody knows when <laughs> when the season's going to end at the minute yeah. um, and whatnot. Uh, big surprise, Augsburg, Schalke. Oh, you watched this, didn't you, Scott? And yeah, uh, BB, I, go on, go on. Give us, give us. What was the odds and stuff with Augsburg and Schalke then, BB? The Augsburg were obviously quite big outsiders. They were three point eight. You probably could have got fours on them, but Schalke, an absolute mess. We watched them last week. Oh, you're talking about bad They're defending. defending. Oh, it looks like they've got a goalkeeper issue for a start, and it's yeah, just so so poor. And I don't think you can put that down to Corona. The form's absolutely dreadful. Mm. No winning eleven. I mean, I, I, you know, I would not if I, I am a betting man, but for anyone that is going to bet, don't go near Schalke. At yeah, and of course, uh, who's their who's their manager? It's David Wagner, isn't it? It's there a, we go, David Wagner. It's a weird <laughs> one. <isn't laughs> it? Not that not that we're happy, not that we're happy that an ex-Wolfsburg boss, but uh, yeah, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's, they are they're having a shocker. It's a weird one for David Wagner because he, you know, when he first went into, into Huddersfield, he didn't, didn't have an immediate impact, as in within the first few games. Yes. But you know, within the first thirty or forty games, um, he, he got promoted, didn't he? And I think within his first thirty games, I think his win record, win record, something like. 30 odd percent or 40 percent yeah um, but they look absolutely terrible we touched on John Joe Kenny's defending for their second goal but even the th- even third, third goal they were just messing around with it um, back four was just just a bit deeper than the halfway line messing around yeah. with it nicked it off and 3-0 absolutely awful terrible it, it was I mean it was like when you say schoolboy defending that probably sums up what that was I mean yeah. The Paderborn one, I mean, he just didn't get a good connection and the lab pounced and he, he killed a beautiful shot. But Schalke seemed like the managers just literally gone out and gone, yeah, just, just have a play. Just, you know, if yeah, you, they, <laughs> you, it, it, it's, it just feels like, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. I think, I think now, they've, they've attempted... Sorry, oh, I think they've returned to the league, aren't they? I think they've come in with a mindset of, mm, we're probably not going to get relegated. We're probably not going to get promoted. There's not mm. really a great deal to lose here. They're, they're sort of mid-table, I think they're sat in eighth or ninth. And they probably just come back and thought, mm, there's not a great deal for us here. And they just look yeah. a bit lethargic. BB, weren't they like 10, were they 10 points behind um, Augsburg as well? Behind Schalke? Yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> to win, well, I mean, I, I don't care what yeah. every level you are, that, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, to say how tight the league is as well. Mm. I mean, the, you know, out of that top five, that top five's really tight and then, the next bolt's really tight. Down at bottom's really tight. So to be ten points clear of somebody kind of says a lot in this. And then for them to go and do one over on them three nil at Schalke is just a bit, you know. Yeah. Schal- Schalke need to give the Reds a shake. I think. Yeah, I think Schalke may be the worst performance of the week, as in the fact that just that just with that defending alone, it was just it was just hideous. I mean, it was just awful. Um, 
Okay, moving on to Cologne. This was actually a good game. This was a game that kind of had a little bit of everything as well. Um, what was the odds uh, for you, BB, over there, Cologne against uh, Dusseldorf? Uh, I didn't write any odds down for this one. I was just going to give a brief overview. Okay, go on then. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I, I did text you absolute scenes in this game if there was any yeah. fans at <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Dusseldorf need points. Yeah. They're right at the bottom. Uh, leading 1-0 at half-time then Clough missed the penalty mm -hmm. just on the hour mark scored a late one 88 but you know yeah. consolation Dusseldorf still going to walk off three and then their top scorer Cordoba bagged one 90 plus one minutes absolute scenes went off running to crowd, no crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I know and, I and would it anyway. is as well that, that is where you want a crowd in it as well when you think about it you want your score alright I know it wasn't the winner and whatnot, but to, to get back and pull it back after missing a penalty that's and, and we're going to touch on this in it Scott we were saying that is where fans are so missing you realise yeah, how important mm -hmm. fans are because you can score a wonder goal you can score a last minute tap in to draw or to win but without that 12th man there it's just it, it's a bit anticlimactic isn't it it's just yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would hope now that you know, once we've got the season over and once we go into next season, I would hope now that the, you know, the big fishes of the footballing world now start, start to really appreciate the fans that come in and pay the money. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about ticket prices being so high over here, ridiculous prices. You know, fans aren't able to attend games because they can't afford it. Fans need to come to games, man. You know, look at look at it in Germany. It's absolutely terrible at the minute. Like, mm. But we've got this to come. Do you know? We? Do you know? I paid 150 pound for my Berlin season ticket. 50, 150 euros, and that was in 2006. So you remember at the time it was like one to two euros. So that was about 70 pound for me. For, I mean, it's it was, ridiculous, it was it? ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I had a great seat. It wasn't like I was in the back of you know nowhere. It was just unbelievable. Um, they do but have yeah, a big I, thing on fair pricing, though, don't they? The yeah, brilliant. They, they have their brilliant. pricing, don't they? They, they, they? You know, for like away tickets, they include like travel and stuff, don't they? I mean, it's, it's so you should the amount of, uh, amount of money in football, you know. Take care of the game, as we can quite clearly see. Yeah. You know? Right, boys, we're going to finish off, OK? We're going to just finish off with our quick Wikipedia game, all right? Now, uh, I thought because it's Bundesliga, because it's Bundesliga, we're going to um, obviously do German players that have played in the Premier League. So it's me versus All right. Oh. So it's going to be Scott Only versus one winner uh, this. CB. <laughs> I don't know. I think I've, I've tried to make it, you know, it's quite easy, um, I think, maybe. So you should be all right. So I started my career at Bayern Munich in 1990 to 97. 185 appearances, 38 goals. Then I moved to Milan, 97 to 99, 39 appearances, four goals. Then I went to Middlesbrough, 99, 2000, 29 appearances, six goals. Any idea so far? No. Okay. Uh, 2000, 2001, I went to Liverpool. Oh. Hmm. I went to Liverpool. Is yes, it? I did. And uh, is it Christian Ziga? I made six. Well done, mate. Well done, Christian Zieger. Well done, well done, well done. I thought you might have had that there, uh, BB, because it were around the time that you were turned into a teenager and... Uh, <laughs> put added pressure on me, man. Don't do that any was, Liverpool It was a bit of pressure. Okay. Pressure. All right. I actually think that you might get this one, okay? This is a bit This is a bit of pressure, because actually, BB, you've been a dark horse in these, and I'm, actually, I've been, uh, I've been terrible. So... I'm 35 years old, so I've, uh, I, I've I'm not um, <laughs> exactly over the hill. Okay, um, just retired. Um, I started my career at Chelsea. 42 appearances, zero goals. Then I went to Middlesbrough. Robert Hooth. Well done, Scott. Yes. Two 0 Well done. Jesus. Well done. Yeah, Stoke Leicester, of course, winning the league with Leicester. Okay, I've got another one coming up here. This one. BB, I've got to tell you, is something or someone that you should get, all right? <laughs> all right? Thanks. No Thanks pressure, mate. No pressure, mate. <laughs> I'm 46 years old, okay? Uh, by Munich, 93 to 98. Newcastle. Ah. Okay. Newcastle. I made 23 appearances before I moved to Liverpool. 
no. I think Scott might have got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I go? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give BB a little one. I'm gonna give him <laughs> one more. So I played at Liverpool for seven years. <laughs> Come on, Liverpool fan. Come on. So I played, I played at Liverpool for seven Didn't years. Man. Well done. Oh. I, how did he get that? How did he get that? All I right. just needed okay. a little bit more time. That's all. Right. Now I'm gonna. This was one that I just thought I'd throw out there because I thought it's actually a bit of a. You go. Oh yeah, forget. You know, one that maybe you might forget about. Still playing. Still playing. Um, so, um, I am 29 years old. So I'm, I am still. I'm in my prime. Okay. Imagine me, old German, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, I started my career in 2007 at uh, Aachen. Uh, then I went to Schalke, 55 appearances, 10 goals. I went to Bochum on loan in 2010, 14 appearances, 2 goals. And I went to Mainz for a year on loan, 30 appearances, 4 goals. So definitely appearances at quite a young age. Uh, ended up at Tottenham, 2013 to 15. 25 appearances, just the one goal. Does anyone know what this might be so far? Remember, I'm only 29. Oh my God. Oh, uh, oh. It's it, been nine and fancy. Is it Lewis Holby? Well done. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, Lewis Holby, because he went to Fulham then, uh, went back to Hamburg, and of course he is at Blackburn Rovers. Yeah, so yeah, Blackburn Rovers. So. Listen, BB, we've got a big game, like we said. We've got uh, uh, Bayern Munich against Dortmund. Uh, what do you feel? What do you think is going to happen here? Is this going to be a Lewandowski against Haaland, um, et cetera, et cetera? It's going to be a humdinger of a game, which means it's probably going to be nil-nil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that. When these big games come up, they, they always do the two top strikers versus each other. You've seen the Sky Sports bloody promos, haven't you? I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, Hear the music. Du, du, du. Yeah. Will win. <laughs> yeah. Ronaldo yeah. doing a couple of step overs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think Dortmund are really well priced for this, actually. They're at home, obviously, there's no crowds and stuff. But when I've been looking, I think you could get 4.0 early in the week. I think it's come down a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not quite sure what in terms of odds, but yeah, that'll be my pick. Hopefully it's going to be a good game. They do look by far. If, I had, to give you, if, if, I, if you had to give me a, a, a result, go on, give me a scoreline. What we're going for? I think two one Dortmund. Scott, uh, I'm going to go Desmond two two. Oh, I was going to go two two as well. Yeah, just I'm going to go two two. Yeah, I just I feel I feel like there's going to be goals. I think with no crowds and stuff, I, I just feel like maybe that pressure's off a little bit. I think goals. I think strikers. I don't know, with the pressure off, it's a bit like you know, when you see this charity match and they make it look easy. Yeah. I mean, I know this is not a charity match, but just without then fans in the ground, I just think maybe that's why defenders are making mistakes and I think strikers are scoring goals. So, uh, well, boys, that is our Bundesliga review. Um, just before you go on this, that. just before you yes. go, uh, everybody, there's some live football on this Saturday on free sports. The Polish yes. League, like Poznan well, against Legia Warsaw. Polish League is back. And it's like, well, we actually, at least we know the names of the teams. You know what? We're all going to become, so we're all Bundesliga fans at the minute. We're all just going to switch the allegiance a little bit. And we're just going to knock over to put a bit like what uh, Podolski did, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? You know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're all going to be Poland fans again this weekend. Just to touch on Premier League, uh, we've been told that, you know, everyone's back in training. Some have decided not to go. Uh, we still haven't been given a date yet for the league, but it's looking pretty close. Ian Dowie thinks only maybe they're going to give him a couple of weeks' notice and they'll be straight back into it. So, um, if it does, that'd be great. I think we've seen now that Bundesliga's working. We're not sure about the championship. We're going to cover all that in another podcast. Um, but, boys, Bundesliga review, I think um, I think it's been a successful uh, start to it. And uh, let's see some more goals. Hope so. Hope so. Boys, see you later. Yeah, Have a good one, boys.